That's Ray's tutoring? Hey guys, welcome to today's video where we'll be talking about acids and bases. If you guys haven't seen my other videos, you guys want to make sure you guys check that out for very quick, informative videos about certain topics that you guys struggle in your classes, usually organic chemistry, chemistry, any type of biological concepts. So again, check those out, like, comment, subscribe. Let's get right into it. So acids and bases. So what is an acid and a base? What I want to do in this video is kind of create a comparative type of idea, right? So it can kind of help you guys navigate and distinguish the differences between acids and bases. So what I have here is an acid is a substance that increases the hydrogen ion concentration of a solution. Bases, they are substances that reduce the hydrogen ion concentration. So. Let me go ahead and write that out for an acid. It is a substance that increases the hydrogen, and I'll just put H, ion concentration, concentration of a solution. And this is usually um, water where uh, a lot of acids and bases are added to, which a uh, later video we'll talk about the formation of the hydronium ion. Now a base, bases, it's the same thing, of course, up there, a substance that the only difference here again is reduces or decreases the hydrogen ion concentration. And the concentration C-O-N-C dot is just a shorthand for concentration. And that can be defined by this. And for acids, can be this. So again, let's revisit this. An acid is a substance that increases the H ion concentration of a solution. So typically when you add an acid to any solution, you're gonna see an increase in hydrogen. When you add a base to any type of solution, you're going to see an increase in the concentration of OH, which is the OH ion, which is um, hydroxides. So in this next slide, I want to go over some of the different acids that we have. So we can make a list here, and this will be perfect for when you guys are studying and you have questions asking you um, which of these are a, an acid, and then they'll ask which of these are a weak or strong acid. So let me go ahead and write some out here. HCl, which is hydrochloric acid, we have HNO3, nitric acid, we have HI, which is hydro, oops, hydro iodic acid, HClO4 is perchloric acid and then lastly we have CHClO3 which is chloric acid. Now as you guys can tell me something that you guys notice about all these acids. Well one thing I like to highlight is that acids typically have the hydrogen in the front so if we were to get a question asking which one of these are acids is it HCl or NaOH, sodium hydroxide? Which one of these would be an acid? I would go with this one, hydrochloric acid, because it has the H in the front. Though there are some exceptions, and I'll get into that a bit later, but this is a way that you can distinguish between an acid and a base. Acids typically have that hydrogen right in the front 
of the chemical formula. That way you can quickly identify which one of these are an acid. So now, what else do we have about these acids? These are all considered strong acids, right? Now, okay, Dre, we have all these strong acids. Which ones are weak? So let's go into the next slide and we can write those out. And I kind of have a trick for kind of memorizing this. We have H2SO3, sulfurous acid. We have HF, which is hydrofluoric acid. We have HNO3, oops, I'm sorry, HNO2, and that is nitrous acid. Next we have H3PO4, phosphoric acid. Lastly, we have H, let me just cross that out. <laughs> I'm cheating here. H2O2H, which is methanoic acid. Now, it's like, okay, Dre, we have to memorize all these acids. Well, what I like to do is, well, first, let me say these are the weak acids. What I like to do is memorize all the strong acids, and then everything else is considered a weak acid. So, all you'd have to do is memorize HCl, HNO3, HI, HClO4, HClO3. Memorize those, and if you see anything else that aren't those strong acids, then they're considered weak acids. That's all. I would say the same is for bases, right? With bases, they can be distinguished by having an OH at the end of their molecular formula. So, so here's some strong bases that we have. Lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, and here are the rest that we'll just write out. Save time. And these all are strong bases. So again, my trick is to just memorize these and anything else that aren't these would be considered a weak base. And again, the special characteristic is the hydroxide at the end. Now I wanna go into some of the special cases where we have acids that <laughs> don't have the hydrogen in the front. And those exceptions are these two here, which is acetic acid, CH3, COOH, and then benzoic acid, which is CH, I'm sorry. It's actually C6. Oh, I didn't take that off. <laughs> sorry guys, C6H5COOH and that is benzoic acid. And this is acetic acid, which is usually found in vinegar. The only, the only way you can possibly distinguish these are this, what I like to call Ku, which is a carboxylic acid that's at the end. So those are the only two exceptions for the acids where they don't have H at the front, but to distinguish them, they have the Ku, the Ku, as I like to call it. All right. So now let's dig, let's dive a bit deeper into what makes something a strong acid or a strong base. Well, it has a lot to do with that acid or that base completely dissociating their ions in water or any type of solution. So if we were to have an example here and we were to take, and again, this is the same for both acids and bases. So I'm just gonna take an acid as an example. So let's take something like hydrochloric. So well, 
first, let's say that this is water. The solution that we're putting the acid in is water. And we have hydrochloric acid added into this water solution. Now, what would happen with this hydrochloric acid is it'll completely dissociate. This is a fancier way of saying that the atoms are going to separate, that hydrogen and chlorine are gonna separate, thus increasing the hydrogen presence, correct? Because remember, if we go back, we said that acids are substances that increase the H ion concentration in a solution. So strong acids fully dissociate in a solution like water. So what we'll have is, we'll have this here. All those hyd uh, hydrochloric acids are going to separate their ions and we're going to have a strong increase in our hydrogen ion. This is what makes it a strong acid. There is a full dissociation, complete dissociation, where these atoms are separated. All of them are separated fully. Now, if we go into another example, we have the same gig going on here, where we have water, and let's take a weak acid. Let's take something like, hmm, what do you guys think? Sulfurous, uh, hmm. let's take nitrous acid. HNO2, HNO2, oops. HNO2, HNO2. I don't know why I keep doing that, guys. <laughs> HNO2, and again, this is water, and this is water as well, and this time we're adding a weak acid into the solution. Now, with weak acids, they partially dissociate, so that's the main difference. Strong acids completely dissociate their ions in water. Weak acids partially do this, okay? So in this instance, what we would have is some of it will dissociate into oops into the water. but it wouldn't be a full dissociation as this strong acid where those atoms are completely pulled apart, okay? And we can say the same thing for weak acids and weak bases where they dissociate completely if they are a strong base or they will partially dissociate or separate if it is a weak base. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It kind of gave you an idea of how to distinguish between acids and bases, some characteristics to look for, and the difference between weak and strong bases, okay? So I'll catch you guys next time, and I'll do another video on acids and bases and go more in depth into certain things, all right? Thanks a lot, guys. Stay easy. Peace.